Number 485, Colin Hall, one of the Bedford team, and next to him, car 613, Andy McCormick, sporting the distinctive brown and yellow of the Cobras. There's no longer team racing, but friends like to paint their cars in team colours. Car number two, Chas Broomfield. He'll be helping his mate Colin in 485 to win, unless he's racing against him. We've had the introductions. There are 32 cars on the grid. That's an awful lot of machinery in a very small space. And this is where the fun the games will begin. We get the final all clear. The lights are flashing. And starter Richard Hall moves them away on the slow lap rolling start. Banger racing is an educational activity. Mutual association, pooling knowledge, commitment, and learning from each other. And banger racing is open to all comers. All you need is a car and a clean license. But to win, you need skill, expertise, and dedication. Some drivers will only race one or two meetings. But most, especially the top graders, keep at it for years. How important is banger racing to them? What do the drivers learn from it? How did they get into banger racing in the first place? I first got interested in banger racing just by going to watch it. I first started watching it as soon as I left school. I remember I wanted to be a mechanic. Never, I never was a mechanic. But now I pick things up at banger racing and I, I know a bit about cars, engines for my own benefit of racing. And I enjoy racing my own cars, what I've built myself. That away, the green flag is out, the lights are on, and away they go, 32 cars on the grid with 107 and 161, leading this very big field into the grandstand turn. Right in front of race control, round goes car number 16, Peter Smith from Bletchley. 127 has managed to pull his car off under the safety of the centre green, car number 442 has just gone hurtling into the fence, again on the grandstand bend. Watch those battles flying, this Charlie Broomfield in car number 2 from Bedford, who tosses those battles aside on the far side, Mad Mick Tracy, car number 247, chasing the number 88 car. Enjoyment is essential for racing and learning. In car number 2, Chaz Broomfield is having a good race, but is Chaz's work connected with cars? No relation at all, I'm Ruth Tyler. Couldn't be any further away from banger racing. I've just learned it all as a, you know, you learn it as you go along. You find out what's gone wrong and why it's gone wrong and you try and eliminate it before you start next time. And this is my tenth year. Ten years of racing. Yeah, and there's two types of drivers. They don't like to race and they don't like to wreck. And you know, and each to their own. <laughs> Whichever turns you on, you do it. Winning demands drivers develop personal powers and skills to the best of their ability. In 485, Colin Hall is doing extremely well. What's his job? Has it to do with racing cars? I'm a demolition contractor, and I, expect I like wrecking houses, same as I like wrecking cars. But as far as mechanics, I'm no mechanic. I'll just pick things up as I go along. I'll race with MGB engines. The first one I had, it was all in pieces, and I I stripped it right down to nothing and rebuilt it. And that engine's lasted me two years now. But a lot of banger drivers, they get through an engine a week, an engine a meeting. Like many of the cars, 613 is prepared by a mechanic, leaving the driver to concentrate on the driving skills. Andy McCormick's a technical sales representative. He used to race motorcycles and scrambles, but admits he knew nothing about cars before taking up bangers. So what's it like driving around that track? For the uninitiated, it's very noisy. You can't hear your own car engine running. There's that much noise from the other cars. The first race I ever went in. I didn't know about barrels. There was a barrel loose, and I thought I'd hit the barrel being an inexperienced driver then. And the car rolled right over, back onto its wheels, and I didn't even realize. I thought it got very dusty inside the car. Well, there's a big steel fence around the outside. I mean, that's a hazard in itself. If you kiss that as you're going down the straight, and cut through door pillars. 
just like a hacksaw. He should surely keep out of trouble now. Oh, Van McCormack's gone. McCormack has been spun out of it in car number 613. And on the last lap, Scott and Richard Hall getting the checkered flag ready. 3.41, Keith Street in there. McCormack still in that second place. Not many of the 32 cars that started left running as Keith Street in car number 341 comes across the line, acknowledges the chequered flag. The race is over. Andy McCormack holding on despite his earlier problems to that second place in car number 613 and Roy Neighbour third in car People get the wrong idea of banger racing. They think the idea is to wreck the car, which it's not. I mean, the, the word racing comes into it. It is a contact sport, and the idea is to get across the line first. But because it's a contact sport, you can put another car out of the way if you want to. And the skill comes in in taking another car out without damaging your own vehicle, really. In banger racing, you're lucky to finish at all. To get into the first ten, you need skill and a fine judgment. It's not just a question of who's fastest, but also who's the canniest with the best machine to avoid the hazards. Opponents are not only racing to win, but using their knowledge of the hazards of the track the fence, the barrels, the curb, the greasy tarmac surface to stop you. Now to assess the damage. Some are already at work repairing their cars for the next race. Colin Hall's stuck on the fence and will need a tractor to pull them off and into the pits. Andy McCormick is already there. What happened to him in that first race? Well, on the top bend there, a uh, chap put his brakes on and ran in the back of me, which slowed me up somewhat. And then coming up to the next bend, uh, I was slowed again and someone spun me out. But I managed to get back in again and got in the second place, so I you, believe. You were starting from the back? Yes. yes. How difficult was it to get through the field? Hard work. Hard work? Yes. So well, what, what are the up. boys going to have to do? To the uh, well, the front's got to come out because it's pushed the tank back slightly. And also the steering uh, is rubbing on the wheel. They've knocked the wing back out and it should be okay then. So how much do you spend? Time, money? Uh, it's time more than money. It, it is very time consuming. Um, I suppose it takes anything up to three full days to prepare a car. If you're doing it in the evenings and weekends, it can be very time consuming. And apart from that, in between races, when you actually get the car home, you've got to repair any damage that's done. Uh, it, takes, it takes a fair amount of time. The money, it's got more expensive now than when I started four years ago. Um, you're paying anything up to about £40 for a car now. Whereas when I first started, the cars were about £5 to £8. Uh, but it's no good racing wrecks if you want to win. Poor Colin's still stuck in that fence and he's only one car with him. So he'll have to work fast if he's to race again. But some cars manage to get through intact. Colin's teammate believes that his success is all due to thorough preparation. How did Chaz Broomfield's race go? Well, it went fairly well considering. There's quite a lot out there. Considering what? Well, considering I'll start way back, like, you know, and there's quite a big field. Is it luck? Not really, no. It's preparation on the motors. What do you mean by preparation? What well, do you do? Well, eliminating all the faults before they happen. For example? Move the petrol pump and everything, uh, tubes in the tyres, cut the front away, you know, all the bits, of, all the snags that you have found out can go wrong in the past to eliminate Whoa. before it happens. What are the major things that go wrong, then, in a race for you? Well, punctures are the biggest problem. But, uh, so I put flaps on my tyres, don't know if you can see them. I haven't got one on this one. I've got one on there. Yeah? yeah, that's a big flap, yeah. Yeah, that, that protects the tyres. Things like that. Any, any other secrets that you... Not really, no. Just, just, um, I don't know. What do you think of when you're going around a track like that with all these cars? I think who's in front, who I can get by. I'm looking, I'm looking for the leader to catch him. That's all I think of. Do you look one car ahead, two cars? How do you do it? Yeah, look, uh... I'll look for the leader if he's half a lap ahead, I'm looking for him. But in this case, he was right behind me, so <laughs> I was lapped down. Chaz came fourth in his race, but there was no such glory for Colin. What happened to him? My wheels are under the wire ropes, and once you get under there, you can't get off, no matter what you got. You have to be lifted up and pulled off. That's the way it goes, isn't it? Is it luck or skill that gets you there? It's unlike what gets you in the fence. <laughs> How did you get the knowledge to do all this, the mechanics and... Body? Just walk around, pick things up, ask people. Yeah, just ask and they'll tell you. And you do it all the time? Big, this yeah. Is, this is... I never miss a meeting here. Come here every meeting. Can't find it. 
Why are you rushing at the moment? Because if you went in the, the place, and have you got another race this afternoon? Might have, you never know with this lot. They might put an extra race on. What are you doing? Well, it's all bent up and you can't get a spanner on. I'm trying to get these bolts on and get the bonnet up. Well, you'll give me a hand. Not really, I'll leave it to the expert. Have you got any favourites, cars? Yeah, these, A60s. It's an old Austin A60, this is. So I've got a... Well, I don't know what's an unpermitted engine in it or what, but it's got an MG engine in it. And uh, I always use them. Because a lot of the boys, an A60, they just use a standard engine. You know, and uh, they don't last very long. They knock the big ends up and seize up. But this old engine, the old MG, they're tough sports car engine. You know, and you just take the engine out of one car, when you wrecked it, put it in another, and away you go again. 614, all in the fence. A monster traffic jam on that top turn. The flashing lights, the Olsden car number 401, and the leader's gone, and just look at them on that turn. Number seven has got through, Nick Childs. Number one has disappeared and he's through now. Johnny Rhino Collins back in the race car, along with one. another of his mates, so John up. Leslie Herbert. Johnny Rhino in car number one. First lap myself, I just feel my way round. I don't you know, go mad off. I sort of keep up with the pack and watch for me spaces and any incidents happening in front of me. There's definitely a passage. There's 30 other cars out there with you. And uh, depending on the, where you're positioned, you know, how you can use that track. You know, I like to come off on the, on the fence side or square off the corners and make the track into a square really rather than, a, than an oval. Johnny Rhino is out of that trouble in car number one and so is uh, Bolton in car number 237. There's a way through, drivers have abandoned ship and the man out there is car number 161. After two or three laps, you know, the, the field sort of spreads out. And then if you've got a car in front of you who's holding you up, then you can hook onto his back end, uh, put your foot down as hard as you can and turn it to your right, which was spinning towards the fence. And vice versa, if somebody's pushing you, then you've got to brake. And I often swerve my steering wheel zigzagging to try and shake them off. And there's Rhino in car number one, making his bid for that second place. He's shut out there beautifully by Liversidge in car number 142. He finds a gap on the inside, almost loses there. He tangles with Liversidge in car number 142. Liversidge holds it well, and he's hanging on to that second place, but Rhino's still in competition. Down that back straight, and Rhino moves through on the inside of Liversidge and takes that second place. So it's car number seven, Nick Charles first, Johnny Rhino in car number one in second place, and Phil Liversidge third. If you've got a car that's going into the bend before you, a little bit slower than you, then you can keep your power on and lean on him as he goes around the corner, use him as a brake. You know, the car cars are actually touching, physically touching, with another thing is locking up the diffs, you know, welding the diffs on the car, which means that you can drive with both back wheels and you can go around that bend as if you're still driving along a straight. The technique for that is to keep the power on all the time. You mustn't ease off the power. Otherwise, you'd lose control completely. I learnt the technique of keeping the power on by experience. Makes his way past the wreckage, past the slower cars, including the spinning global car in front of him. There's the checkered, and uh, car number seven, Nick Charles, takes it with car number one in second place. John For me, I just work and do bang racing, that's it. My free time when I come home from work is spent on the cars, because it, it does take a lot of time, your own free time, really because a car can last one meeting, it can go several meetings. It depends what action you get into and also how you have prepared the car. I have a retail shop, so uh, all I've learned about mechanics is what I've learned through banger racing, really. The first turn are confirmed by the stewards, but confusions can arise. You need to be pretty alert to spot the leader amongst back markers. Colin was it, which puts him in the final. Johnny came second. Clearly a skilled driver making use of his small car to squeeze a tight passage round the track. But he's also a skilled mechanic, preparing his car to last. The rules of banger racing demand that all cars conform to a general specification. 
glasses removed, the frame reinforced, the petrol tank shifted. But drivers pick up other modifications from each other, such as cutting the handbrake cable or removing the floor oh. around the gearbox. Johnny. Johnny Rhino's ready to talk to us, so let's hear about his race. That was a race. Oh, that was a race enough. I'm glad a teammate got it though. I thought he was giving me first position actually, about four laps from home, and I just sort of kept out of trouble. I was following another teammate and uh, he was holding me up a little bit actually. If I'd known that I was in second, I'd have gone a bit harder. But uh, I mean, what happens? Do you look in front of you? Do you, can you spot oh, people? Oh, you, you're always looking well ahead, you know, for any mishaps that other people are making, you know, because you haven't got to make a mistake out there. You haven't got to make one. What happens now? How do you get ready for the final? Uh, well, I'm lucky. Uh, I've had a scrape along the side there. Uh, well, I'm just managed to, as I say, it was just squeezed through a gap there. As one car was coming to close it up, I just managed to squeeze through, but he'd done that there, pulled the back wing off. I shall just bend that back round and back under, because if I get a hit up the back, this will come on, possibly give me a punch. Although I've got tube tyres, you know, if the place this sharp metal goes in the tyre, I could possibly get a puncher, so I've got to put all that out of the way so there's no damage. Well, I've always been a lover of motorsports, and this is the cheapest form that I could get into. It's, it's, a, it's a really cheap sport, although you know, the biggest cost is running to and from the track. You know, that's, that is the main cost. I used to do another promoter last year, but the tracks have got further and further away, so, so it's a cheap sport. Locally, I'm doing all right. There are two main kinds of activity in the pits. One is concerned with the car's movement. It involves heavy work with axes, sledgehammers and chainsaws. The other needs more sophisticated engineering work. Another teammate of Johnny and Colin, Brian Bolton, had an unlucky race. Well, actually, I, I, the steering box blind twisted and I tried racing without a, without a steering box. Can you do that? Well, in actual fact, you drive on your throttle, getting your wheels to spin you round. I got round a couple of bends, but unfortunately, I hit the fence and ripped me uh, front track rod on. So what have you got to do to it now? Uh, put a new steer, uh, steering arm on and uh, one of these pieces of kits to keep my track in it. In. So do you carry all this sort of gear with you? To, we uh, carry, well, we carry a few spares, but um, usually mates help us out. You know, they've got pieces we haven't, so one thing helps us each other. Have you got a preferred car? Oh yes, an Austin Cambridge. Why? They're so strong. This is done for four or five meetings now, and uh, it's what one, two races. But it's a wreck. Still going strong. Good for another few meetings yet. The support of teammates and the group identity, symbolised by racing colours, is boosted by the interest of a wider community, for banger racing is not just for men and boys. Behind the scenes, groups of supporters promote dances and other gatherings. Whole families become involved in banger racing. Wives, Children, girlfriends, all have shared in the preparations for the race and all enjoy cheering the drivers on. Well, the fence being stitched up, once again, start original into things, giving the drivers the last minute instructions because in the grand final of the afternoon on the oval, we start them in graded order and on the clutch. And that away, the greens go down, the flags are waving, and away they go. There are 30 cars on the grid, on the oval, racing. Over 20 laps, Bruce Aldridge didn't get away in car number 209. Keith Street did in car number 341. And it's Street who's leading the pack down the far side from car number 519. Colin well, and Charlie are battling it out in 485 and number two. But they'll have to avoid this mayhem before they can emerge as battle-scarred winners. So why do they do it? A lot of people ask me why I do it. Uh, it's very difficult to explain until you've actually done it yourself. I suppose the first race I went into, I was sat on the start line and uh, I said to myself, what the hell are you doing? Sat over here. Must be crackers. You know, you're going to get thumped and banged, and there's a good chance you won't get a broken leg or a broken arm. When the flag went down, you get this big pump of adrenaline which flows through you. The longer you do it, the less noticeable this is. But you notice it on a Monday afterwards. You go into a sort of a, not a depression, but you're on a down, whereas the day before you were on an up.
here for the racing. <laughs> if I can't win, then I'll make sure somebody else doesn't win. He's back on the track. Why do they keep coming back? I just find I'm addicted to it. I've been packing up for years, but I can't. It's just something that's in, you know. I've, I've just got to do it. I can't stop doing it. A lot of it's luck, yeah. Getting through the pile-ups and that. You know, but the rest of it's skill. <laughs> He forces the Bill Dollar car very wide indeed, and it's 373 who now takes over. Dave Inns from Bill Dollar, but Bill Dollar's fighting back. Very, very close indeed. They almost clip a dead car on that corner, but now Inns is through, and Inns is getting right away in car number 373 with Bill Dollar second place in car number 444. Colin Hall still third in car number 485. Some drivers do get annoyed with it. If you keep spinning the same one out in the race, they get awkward and they pay you back. When I'm on the track, I'll get no respect for my car at all. That goes as fast as ever I can get it to go. Yeah, that's all right, mate. I enjoy it. That's yeah, having, yeah, having a smash and a spin, we all enjoy it. That's what it's here for, mate. Let's give you the confirmed results. Dave Inns was first in car number 373. From Colin Hall in car number 485. And Bill Doddle in third place in car number 444. Fourth place went to... Here on the track, men have learned exceptional driving skills. In the pits, they share their mechanical skills. At home, in the pub, they plot and prepare for the next race day. Banger racing is skillful. It's fun, and there's something new to learn at leisure. I can guarantee you when I've been on holiday, I'll come back straight up here before I even reach the house. And that's, that is the truth. I live it. This, this is my life.